Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam and I am super excited about Flight Fest 2021. It's almost time again for Flight Fest. We took a break in 2020, but we're coming back stronger than ever and I am super excited about it and I hope you are as well. And maybe it's your first time going to Flight Fest and or maybe it's just been a while since you went to one of these and I thought it would be a good idea to go through some really good things to bring uh, to any kind of event, but especially to Flight Fest. So at the last Flight Fest, I asked some people what they thought were really important things for beginners to know, people who were coming to Flight Fest for the first time and essential stuff to bring. So let's see what they had to say, and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at some really helpful resources for beginners on the Flight Fest website, and then we'll go through my own personal list of things that are really important to bring. If you're gonna get into the hobby, do it here, because there are so many people here that are willing to help and that can help you. Make friends. Yeah, yeah come and yeah. talk to people, take in the experiences of others, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what this is all about, is community and coming together. Yeah, expect mud. Boy, bring mud boots. I did not bring mud boots. Our first year we came, it had torrential downpours and it was wet all weekend, so now every yeah. year before we come, we throw in a pair of boots. Yeah. Get those $6 rubber boots from Walmart and actually bring them. I have them and I didn't bring them, so don't be like me. Definitely, definitely be prepared for mud. Lots of water. That's, Bring a power a strip because there, there are there's electricity in the tents, but there's not near enough plug-ins in the tents. So a power strip. I expect to have fun first of all, yeah, and then just yeah, just try and like get out there and meet as many people as you can. I think that's the best part of Flight Fest. My first two years, I brought a ton of planes. I think the best plan of attack is plan planes you want to build. Uh, maybe get in touch with friends that you're going to come with and uh, get ready to build some stuff here instead of bringing it all because it just makes the packing a lot easier and it's a lot more fun you have here because if you bring planes they'll all be gone in the first day. <laughs> bring a lot of planes too because you're going to be losing them. See now you say bring a lot and then you just said bring none. Or bring, bring a couple that you don't mind losing but uh, don't yeah. bring any that you like. <laughs> yeah. So expect to go home with Less planes than you came. Yes. With. Yeah. That's good. Or more parts. Extra hot glue to share. Bring bamboo, and, and somewhat depends on. Or, or do you intend to fly, or do you intend to build? Mm. Uh, if you intend to build, then you need to build all your buildings. Bring enough building materials and supplies. If you if you intend to fly, then whatever you need to do for repairs. So organization, organization tools, right? You know, the more you can yeah. put things together in a single spot, the better yeah. off you're going to be. Have extra tarps if you set up, easy up. Extra tarps, extra bungees, extra stakes. Have a nice mallet to pound those stakes in, because we we were running around like crazy when the storm hit and the wind was coming to rip our stuff away trying to get everything everything down and secured and, and I was glad I had extra stakes and bungees. I'm kind of at a loss right now because I just lost all my planes the other day and they're kind of beyond repair and I'm having receiver issues but I'm having a super fun time here with all these great people and uh, it's really really fun you can't go wrong here even if you don't have anything to fly tons of fun. Spend some time teaching somebody under the age of 30 something uh, the under 20 year old element is magical here. This yeah. is unlike any other model aviation event. But not everybody camps so if you're not a camper um, if you have extra parts if you have an old plane laying around that you busted up rip the motor and the ESC and maybe some servos out of there bring spare parts because you'll be walking around looking at people building stuff and you might want to throw something together. When I was building like my first plane I was doing it at home watching the build videos which are nice but if there's a specific issue that you have and it's not covered in the build video like if you mess something up and you don't know where to, what to do that's what everybody's here for that's why the people in the volunteers like even just people next to you might be able to know something or have a tool that would help you like this is the best place to start into the hobby. Stop and have a solid conversation with every person that passes you because they're all interested in exactly the same things you are. This is a really good place to be inspired by other people's weird stuff and you might have an idea. <laughs> the weirder the cooler. If you can if you can put your mind set to uh, that knowing you're gonna crash and accepting it just like you with the bat just like being super happy when you see it go down like that's the best mentality to be in. Nailed it. And now let's go to the Flight Fest website. So Flight Fest Ohio, July 15th to 18th, 2021. You can register down here, sign a waiver, 
And then uh, let's, we're going to take a look at the schedule and we'll take a look at the map right there. So let's take a look at that schedule. Let me zoom out. There we go. So this will give you a pretty good idea. And a lot of this is like flexible, but here's the schedule just for your reference. So we've got, um, technically it starts on, or it, you know, you can show up as early as the 14th, which I might try to do that because it's first come first serve for uh, camping placement there. Um, and then we have and then Thursday, open fly, registration, store, volunteer meeting, pilot meeting, uh, combat. I always thought it was strange how they have the pilot meeting like at 10 a.m., but you know that's just kind of how it goes. Uh, and then they have night flying. And you'll notice they have like a lot of different um, combats. So I think they have like two or three every day. But sometimes they'll just throw in some you know combats. So this is a pretty flexible schedule. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. But this is where it is in case you need to find it. So it goes through the, uh, oh, that's a typo. Sunday, July 14th. That should be the 18th, uh, I believe. So anyway, that's where the schedule is. Let's go back to the main page. And then let's click on the map. And so I like maps, so this will give you an idea of kind of where everything is. Now, this one isn't labeled. Um, I thought there was one that was labeled, but we'll have to make up our own labels because I think I, I think I understand this map. So we have the main flight line area, and that's like this whole strip up here. That's the main flight line area up there, uh, this whole section right there. And that's where you're going to be doing most of your flying. Now, the next most important things are going to be in this kind of region right here that's kind of your main like event areas so these three tents there are three build tents this time and there's one here there's one here and there's one here and then the center stage little tent thing is right here then we have this big tent and that's kind of your main i guess hangout tent uh kind of for like some of the main events that are going on um and then or i guess main non-flying events and then i think these little circles I'm not sure what those are. I think they're um, product vendors. And then I think these orange uh, squares here are going to be food vendors, I think. But they are going to have food on site. And then this building right here, this kind of barn shed building, is the FT store. So that's where you can buy, uh, in addition to the other vendors, uh, the vendor tents, you know, you can buy all your FT stuff there. Um, so that's like, you know, really handy. So, um, be prepared to spend some money because you might find yourself wanting to do that. Let's see, all these yellow boxes, first of all, I think all these little yellow boxes right here and on the other side as well, I think those are um, those are probably like spots to have a pop-up tent. A lot of people have pop-up tents so they can put their planes out there and kind of hang out um, and go up to the flight line. And then over here on the left, I believe these, these big grayish boxes, grayish blue boxes, are the spaces for um, RV parking and as well down here on the, the bottom left of the screen. And then I think kind of towards the center, I think, I think that's also for RV parking. And then on the right hand side, we have all these, these green squares uh, and those are going to be, I think, uh, cause again, nothing's labeled, but I believe those are all tent cap camping spaces. So tent camping spaces down here as well. So if you come early, you probably want a place probably somewhere in here that's going to be your prime camping area well really basically just the closer you can be to kind of all like the stuff that's going on um if if that's what you what you like doing and then this this strip of grass right here this is actually a runway that's the uh fury fury field i think so that's their own private runway so we don't want to like mess that up or drive vehicles across it and then this area right here is the fury house the house of fury and um so you know don't don't go like camping over there either i don't see an fpv area i'm not sure how they're going to do the fpv stuff that yeah i haven't seen any info on that so we'll just kind of have to see how it goes when we get there um at least i haven't heard of any info but we do have a nice big you know flight line so it should be okay this black uh, this black runway, that's kind of like the main official flight line. And that's where they'll, they'll run down like, um, like a tarp like material over the grass. So that way you can actually, you know, take off planes from there, but you can fly like, well, unless they designate otherwise, you can pretty much fly like anywhere, you know, past that red line, I think is what it is. That red line probably. And then I'm pretty sure that blue line is like, if you are probably, if you're a spectator, you don't go past the blue line. 
because the the red line is where people stand to fly i think that's that's probably how it goes so that's the map uh we here's this the the we've got the schedule and the map and that's all on the website the flightfest.com that you can go check out oh and i do want to mention if you want to volunteer go check out the the volunteer stuff let's do i don't know learn more let's see what that is so Oh, that's the flight crew. Oh, that's flight crew. I don't know if that's volunteer or not. Maybe that's volunteer. But you can also just volunteer for like a few hours um, during the event. And I think I'll try to do that as well. And uh, it's pretty cool because, um, you know, it's it's fun to, to help help make it happen as well as, you know, be there and enjoy it and everything. So let's move on to the actual my actual packing list to help you uh, not forget important stuff this isn't like an extensive list but some really important things that you might forget so let's go through that got camping hygiene food water clothing rc gear and well that's it for now if you are camping let's talk about camping Uh, it's pretty much car camping so you can bring quite a bit of stuff so bring whatever you would usually bring when you're car camping you know uh, camp chairs sleeping bags tent that sort of thing uh be sure to bring extra tarps um like ben said because it could get uh it could get really rainy bring extra bungee cords and tie downs or ropes to uh keep everything secure bring extra stakes extra or a mallet and a hammer don't forget that don't be like one of those dummies that's trying to pound in a a tent stake with like a a shoe or a rock or something like that (laughs) uh sun reflectors for your vehicle I always have a sun reflector, or you could put like a reflective tarp over your vehicle's windshield. That'll really help to keep your vehicle cool and your tent as well. Um, You might want to bring a fan, maybe a battery powered fan or a fan that runs off of like a small generator or your vehicle. Um, Just if if you need to cool your vehicle or your tent down, you know, when before you go to sleep, I guess, Uh, or a solar powered fan, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, you can bring a small generator, like one of those little Honda ones that are quiet. Um, it's usually what pe- people bring because it's really annoying if somebody has a really loud generator. Or you could bring like a battery bank type of situation if you have like a solar setup. Uh, if you need, you know, to to power like some, you know, inflator pumps or fans or whatever uh, or lighting. Uh, folding table. Bring a folding table because, I mean, I guess that's kind of obvious, but, you know, you'll probably want to work on planes or maybe work on food or just need to keep stuff off the ground when you're in your camp. Paper towels. Be sure you bring paper towels. Those are really important um, because, you know, it just things get dirty and you want to be able to wipe things off and paper towels are important. Trash bags. Also very important. We want to clean up all of our trash and make it, everything nice and pretty. Um, first aid kit, there will be medical on site, but you know, it's super easy to, uh, injure yourself if you're working with razor blades and hot glue all day. So I think that's, uh, just important to, for minor things. And, um, you know, that way you're not overloading the medical staff there. You might also want to bring a bicycle or a one wheel or a off-road scooter or something like that. Um, if, especially if you're parked very far away. So then you can, you know, get around the uh, the festival eat more easily. A headlamp. Definitely, definitely bring a headlamp. You'd probably bring one for camping anyway. But definitely, um, you know, get a bright headlamp with like a long-lasting battery or rechargeable batteries or bring extra batteries because you might be using it a lot in the build tents at night. They do have lighting, but sometimes the lighting doesn't work or maybe they shut off the lighting, you know, past a certain time or something. So definitely uh bring a headlamp uh one with a red filter is really great i love red filters because bugs aren't attracted to red as much as white so that works really well okay on to hygiene obviously like toothbrush toothpaste you know whatever your hygiene stuff is um deodorant that's great because you're going to be out in the field and you can get really smelly and stuff like when you're camping and if you if you get a spray deodorant then you can like spray your tent and your clothes and stuff and then you don't smell quite as bad Definitely bring a beach towel or a bath towel for drying off. Um, and I like to bring like those moist towel thing. I can't think of what they're called. They're like the wipes basically um, that you can use to substitute a shower. They are going to have shower trailers, but um, you know, you, you never, you can't really guarantee that you're going to be able to get a shower because they might have a huge line or uh, you know, the showers might break or you might just not want to take a shower. Personally, I kind of hate shower trailers because they're just like 
kind of gross and they smell weird, but that's just kind of how it is when like a bunch of people are washing and there's water and stuff. So anyway, keep your options open. You definitely want sunscreen for your face or your whole body, but I can't stand sunscreen. So I try to just use it on my face. Um, but definitely, especially if you are prone to burning, cause you will burn like a, a crispy little tater fry, um, out there. Cause it's, it's, there's a lot of sun and it's hot. Toilet paper. That's pretty obvious. You can never have too much toilet paper. I think we learned that in uh, the past year. And hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer is a big one because, remember, we are camping. Um, They do have hand sanitizer stations. Flight Fest has always been really good about having really good uh, porta-potties and good sanitization areas. Um, But, you know, bring some for yourself so that when you're in camp or when you're about to eat food or whatever, you can uh, clean off your hands. Now, speaking of food food and water bring lots of water like bring a stupid amount of water um i'm not sure what options they have for water there i don't know if they they provide it like for free because that would be a lot of water if they did they might have like a water a water station i'm not sure but bring lots of water like at least you know i don't like one of those 36 pack of of 16 ounce bottles or just fill up your own bottles and a few of those uh, two gallon, um, those big jugs with the spigot, get a bunch of those. Um, And probably don't keep them in your car because they'll get really hot. But yeah, definitely have lots of water because you got to drink a lot of water. Bring a cooler with lots of ice or maybe even dry ice if you have perishables. I don't think I'll be taking a cooler this time because I don't really want to deal with, you know, perishable food and um, you know, trying to cook stuff, but maybe if you have like drinks that you want to keep cold, that would be very good. Um, and then of course, if you're cooking, you want to have a stove, fuel, pots, utensils, you know, it's really, it's kind of just a big pain to, uh, to have to try and cook stuff and then clean the dishes. And then you got to like put everything away and take it all back out and it takes time. So I'm probably not going to be doing that. But if you are cooking, just something to keep in mind, you know, all that stuff. And then, of course, the paper towels and the trash bags are really important for that as well. And you might want to bring money or have plan to, to spend money to uh, buy food from food trucks or vendors. Because honestly, I mean, maybe you're thinking, oh, I'm just going to bring my own food and save money. But when you get there and then like it's hot and then you're your tent is really far away and you're hungry and you're like, man, those burgers smell really good. You, you might just end up wanting to buy some food from the vendors and, you know, support the vendors anyway. So something to keep in mind. A tip is, um, don't keep your food in your vehicle, um, because it's going to get really hot. You might want to just keep all your food in a plastic tub, like a sealed plastic tub inside your tent or in the shade somewhere. Moving on to clothing, expect rain and mud. Just like everybody said, um, that one year it was it was super rainy and then it got super muddy. It did dry out eventually, but you know it can definitely uh, the weather can change very quickly. A rain jacket or a poncho is definitely a must. Rain boots, obviously. Now the thing is with rain boots, they keep your feet you know, dry aside from the sweat from your own feet, but they'll keep your feet dry and clean. Whereas if you wear socks or if you, sorry, if you wear Crocs or sandals, your feet will, you know, they'll get wet and, and nasty cause it, it'll get muddy and, and there's like straw and stuff. So there's dust from the straw that they put down. Um, but your feet will still be mostly protected and they'll dry easily. So personally, I'd probably go for the rain boots. I got to remember to bring some rain boots but hopefully it'll be just perfect weather, right? Bring a hat with a big old brim because otherwise you will fry your ears off. Um, and again, I'm assuming that you're not some kind of like super, you know, sun warrior person that just loves the sun and your skin is just like already like leather and, and you just don't even care. Um, if you care, you're going to want to wear a big hat. Also wear lightweight, loose fitting clothing, preferably in a light color to reflect the sun's rays and uh i'm gonna be wearing like probably long sleeves and pants because i can't stand sunscreen um even though that is you know it's kind of hot sometimes Um, but when you're in the uh, build tents in the build tents it's nice and shady most of the time because they're big old tents Um, and if you hang out in the store they've got air conditioning in there so that the (laughs) the store is a great place to hang out for a while And since you'll be walking a lot, most likely bring lots of comfortable socks, sunglasses. It's going to be really bright 
and we're going to be staring at the sky most of the time because the planes are all in the sky. So bring sunglasses and sunglasses again, just to make sure that you don't forget and maybe even take a second pair as a backup or, or you could double up your sunglasses. Like for me, something about staring at the sky it causes my eyes to just like water like crazy so i try to wear some really dark uh sunglasses uh you might want a neck fan thingy uh like my buddy ben had dude i need to get one of those fans Power like down. every time i see you yeah yeah, yeah. i think it was i think he was hanging on one of those little strips in an aisle at a walmart somewhere maybe in fact i need to remember to get one of those for this time because that that thing seems awesome like it's just constantly blowing you know, air in your face, like to keep that air circulating, that seems pretty freaking sweet. So you might want to check that out and uh, get a bandana or a cloth or one of those, you know, cool wrap thingies to uh, keep wet and uh, keep it around your head and neck to keep you cooled off. Cause that's very, very important. You can't have any fun if you're having a heat stroke, you know what I mean? As the old saying goes. Okay, now we're getting to the fun stuff, the RC gear. So bring whatever you'd bring when you go out flying, obviously. So like, you know, your your planes, your quads, your goggles, your, your transmitter, all that stuff. And then of course you wanna bring like extra batteries, maybe more than you would if you were just flying for a day. Um, and then building supplies, if you're gonna be building, Bring building supplies, foam board, packing tape, hot glue gun, plus the sticks, razor blades, motor mounts, uh, rubber bands, soldering iron and solder, super glue, zip ties, electrical tape, etc. You know, all that, all that building stuff. Um, but, you know, don't overwhelm yourself with stuff because you can find some things on site and everybody's super generous and sharing is is a very common thing so i mean that's what's so cool about flight fest like you could be like oh shoot i need a prop wrench and then five people will be like oh yeah i've got a prop wrench here or you can be like oh can somebody give me like a, a pack of propellers and they'll be like yeah i've got a spare pack like it's super cool power strip absolutely definitely you need a power strip i have to remember to not forget this um, it's, you could use one of those surge protector kind of things if it has like a long cord on it that's even better but definitely a power strip because in the build tents, they do have power outlets. Uh, I think they have like four per four tables or cause they usually bunch the tables up. I think like you kind of like four tables in a group and then they'll have a power outlet. So basically you might end up only having kind of like one outlet that's kind of designated at your build table. Um, and the build tables, by the way, are just kind of first come first serve. Like you just, you find an empty table and you just set up there, bring some short extension cords. I can't remember if they allow them in the build tent. I thought last year, maybe they were saying that they didn't want people to bring their own extension cords, but maybe just like a short, you know, extension cord of like, I don't know, six feet or something, just so that you might need to get power kind of like across a table, uh, depending on how close the, uh, the power outlet is bring spare electronics for when you crash so you know maybe more than what you would normally bring on a day out flying like maybe bring an extra motor and this one is pretty obvious but i thought i should say it because sometimes i almost forget this is bring your lipo battery charger and your power supply uh, because sometimes you might go out flying for a day and not need to bring the charger because you have a bunch of batteries but just remember to bring your charger and uh i think they said that there's going to be a charging station I've never really seen like a charging station area, like a like a place where you like bring your batteries and then they charge them for you, like a concierge charging. I don't think that they have that. I think you're basically just responsible for your own charging, um, usually at your build table. If you're bringing a bunch of gear and planes and all kinds of stuff, bring a cart or a wagon or some sort of wheeled device to carry your stuff. It makes a huge, huge difference. It's so much easier than trying to carry everything in your hands or like in a big backpack or something. So if you can have a cart or wagon, and I mean, as far as I know, no one's ever stolen a cart or wagon. I think really it's very rare that people steal anything from these events, even though, you know, it is a huge event. And so there's, there's going to be some bad apples. But basically what I'm saying is if you bring a cart or a wagon, you could probably just leave it, you know, at your build table and it's going to stay where it is. I started bringing, uh, last year I brought a wheeled wagon thingy and it was, like a, it was like a wheeled chest and it was really, really helpful. It was really great. Bring a tarp or a painter's plastic sheet, like that thin, that thin plastic sheet. 
uh, to cover your airplanes and gear, especially if you leave them in the build tents overnight, because even if it doesn't rain, it will still get uh, really soaked with all of the dew because the humidity is so high. And last but not least, definitely not least, put a beeper or a finder like the V-Fly finder on your aircraft, whether it's a quad or a plane or whatever, get one, put it on there. Because man, if there are crops growing, especially beans, beans are the worst. If there are crops growing out in the field where we're flying and your plane goes down or your quad goes down, it will be very, very hard to find it. Now, the good news is that there are like a hundred other people there that are also looking for their aircraft. So you, the chances that somebody else will find your aircraft is actually pretty high, but have a beeper on that thing. Otherwise, I mean, if if nothing, I guess worst case, you'll lose it forever. Best case, um, you know, you, you'd still be wasting a bunch of time trying to find your airplane when you when you could be, you know, flying again or building. So definitely put a beeper on your aircraft. And most importantly, be ready to have fun, make friends and crash airplanes because this is Flight Fest, baby, where amazing, magical creativity happens and crashing is a way of life. All right, that's gonna do it, everybody. Let me know in the comments. Leave a comment on, on things that I missed or what you think are really important to bring that you want beginners to know about Flight Fest and what they should bring and what it's gonna be like. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you at Flight Fest 2021. It's pretty much just like last. Just like you gotta last. hold your trophy. Yeah. Ooh, what's this? You gotta oh, yeah. hold it in the yeah. interview. Yeah, I gotta redo the interview. We'll get, I mean, we get bars in our goggles.